see here. P2, which we've used a lot. That is the vector space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2. The dimension is 3, and here's why. The basis, we'll list a basis, and that should tell you. This is the best part. If you just want to list a basis, you can count the number of vectors. That's how many dimensions that space is. t squared, t, and 1. Any linear combination of t squared, t, and 1 will give you every single possible polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2. For example, 3t squared plus 6t minus 10. Well, it's 3 times t squared, 6 times t, minus 10 times 1. 3t plus 2, 3 times t, 2. It's a degree 2, this is a degree 1, degree less than or equal to 2. So this one has to be in there. So P2 has dimension 3. Pn has dimension n plus 1. OK. Now, here's where it gets really, really interesting, and just to sort of a sideline discussion, something to sort of think about, a little bit of mathematical culture, uh, a little bit of abstraction. Um, notice that this P2 has a, di has a dimension of 3. Well, our 3 space, uh, normal 3 space that we live in, also has a dimension of 3. As it turns out, um, all vector spaces of a given dimension the only difference between the vector spaces is the identity of their elements. In one vector space, R3, we're talking about points or vectors, no, arrows. In this vector space, where this is a basis, it's a dimension of 3. The elements are actual polynomials. As it turns out, the identity of the elements is the only thing that's different about those two spaces. These two spaces have the exact same algebraic properties. They behave exactly the same way. In fact, I don't even need to think about it. If I can find myself 15 other vector spaces that have a dimension of 3, the identity of those elements completely doesn't matter. In fact, I can, it doesn't even matter. I can treat it completely symbolically. I can call them whatever I want. I can label them whatever I want. What's important is the underlying algebraic property, and it is the same for every single vector space of a given dimension. That's what's extraordinary. That's what gives mathematics its power. Once I understand, let's say, R3, and we understand R3 pretty well. We live in this space. We enjoy the world around us. Look at what we've done with the world around us. If I find any other vector space with strange objects in it, if it has a dimension of 3, I, can, I know everything about it. I know absolutely everything about it because it behaves the same way that R3 does. Again, that's really, really extraordinary. Uh, the last thing that I want to leave you with in this particular lesson is that what we've dealt with are um, finite dimensional vector spaces. In other words, we know that R3 has an infinite number of vectors in them, but the basis, the dimension is finite. It's three. That means I only need three vectors in order to describe the entire space. Now, that isn't always true. There are infinite dimensional vector spaces that require an infinite number of vectors to actually describe them. Those of you that actually go on into mathematics, higher mathematics, or actually not even that, those of you who are engineering and physics majors, at some point you're going to be discussing something called the Fourier series, which is a, an infinite series of uh, trigonometric polynomials, sine of x, cosine of x, sine 2x, cosine 2x, sine 3x, cosine 3x, and so on. That's an infinite dimensional vector space. Okay. Um, so I will list, let me see, um, two infinite dimensional vector spaces. We're, of course, not going to deal with it. In linear algebra, mostly we stick with finite dimensional vector spaces, but I do want you to be aware of them. P, the space of all polynomials. All polynomials, that's an infinite dimensional vector space. It requires, it has an infinite number of vectors in its basis, not like P2 or R3 that only has three. And the other one is 
the space of continuous functions on the real line. So the space of continuous functions, you'll see it represented like this from negative infinity to infinity. It's defined all, the entire real line. That space has an infinite number of dimensions. I need an infinite number of uh, functions in order to be able to describe all of the other functions if I need to do so. I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. But really what I want you to take away from this is that it does the identity for, any, for a vector space of any given dimension the identity of the elements is completely irrelevant. The underlying behavior is what we're concerned with, and the underlying behavior is exactly the same. Thank you for joining us here at uh, educator.com, Linear Algebra. We'll see you next time.